is now at or near record lows. Severe drought drying up that river and the situation taking a toll on the economy. It's disrupting tourism and critically shipping, especially for farmers who move our food by the tons and tons on the Big Muddy. The Mississippi River, this is also incredible, has hit historic low levels due to the current drought the country is facing. The unusually low water levels of the river have caused barges to get stuck in mud and sand. It's also triggered waterway restrictions from the Coast Guard. Water levels are projected to drop even further in the coming weeks as well, hurting the region's economic activity and potentially threatening jobs. The Mississippi River is a key U.S. waterway that ferries essential commodities between the heart of America and the Gulf Coast. However, with weeks of drought, the Mississippi River now sits at a negative 10 feet, causing transportation vessels to halt mid-route. I'm Waterfront Gurus and you're watching the Mississippi River drying up and how it will impact the United States. So what's the cause? The reason for low river levels is simple, no rain. Although the river is always relatively low during this time of the year, many parts of the Midwest and Plains haven't seen enough rainfall to ease drought conditions despite two record storms hitting St. Louis and Eastern Kentucky this summer, per the Washington Post. The United States Coast Guard says right now in the St. Louis area, the Mississippi River level has dropped to minus 1.88, a level that hasn't been recorded since 2004. In about a week, we're projected to go to minus three, uh, which will be about the 25th lowest that it's ever been. The last time in this area that we've seen significantly low water was approximately the 2012-2013 season. From historic flooding this summer to historic drought this fall, the primary investigator at the Water Institute says this is an indicator of how drastically the climate is changing. On a typical day, the water line for the Mississippi should be anywhere from 15 to 20 feet above my head. But today, this massive river is now running dangerously low. According to historic averages, the river's water levels are projected to rise around Christmas time, leaving two dry months remaining. Jeff Grasho, a national weather hydrologist at the Lower Mississippi Forecast Center, told the New York Times, basically we're not seeing any heavy rainfall over the next several weeks to indicate that we would get any relief from low water conditions from the Lower Mississippi. With less than an inch of rain expected across the region by the end of the next week, everything from cruise ships and river transportation to the U.S., supply chain and river ecosystems will be affected. On any other day before the water levels began to drop, the Tower Rock would have been an island within the main channel in Missouri's Perry County. Now, however, a dry stretch of land allows visitors to walk to the once isolated landmark. 400 million year old rock attracting tourists. As river levels on the Mississippi River continue to drop, a typically isolated rock formation, roughly 100 miles south of St. Louis, is turning into a tourist destination for people across the country. Sitting in the middle of the Mississippi River, Tower Rock has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1970. Usually accessible only by boat, the low water on the Mississippi River has people flocking to the 400 million year old landmark in Perry County, and the Missouri Department of Conservation is urging people to be safe and courteous when visiting Tower Rock. The roughly 32 acre natural area is comprised of upland, oak pine and mixed hardwoods. It features a vertical geological formation known as Tower Rock in the river channel. What does this mean for transportation industry? Boats and barges are beached, resulting in a backup of over 2,000 barges and even more smaller water vessels, says the U.S. Coast Guard. Unfortunately, the only way to resolve traffic backups are to dredge the river, costing taxpayers billions of dollars as a result. Should the water levels continue to decrease, this costly solution will be the only way to continue water-based transit. Although barges take up a large percentage of vessels that ferry across the Mississippi River, they aren't the only mode of transit being impacted. Riverboats and cruise ships play an important role in the regional economy. Tour company owner Bertrand Hayes Davids told the Wall Street Journal that he provides tours to people on riverboat cruises that arrive in Vicksburg. If the drought continues, he may have to cancel as many as half of the 28 tours he had scheduled for November. Passengers on the way to St. Paul, Minnesota on a 15-day Mississippi Viking cruise ship were forced to disembark many miles away from the destination on the nearest boat ramp with full refunds and the encouragement to rebook when water levels have risen. 
What does this mean for agriculture exports? According to Bloomberg, the Mississippi River supports 92% of agricultural exports in the US. This high percentage is due in part by the low costs associated with water transportation, which is much less costly than plane, train or trucking. Unfortunately, the delays in water-based agricultural cargo will lead to alternative shipping methods, which could result in increased highway traffic and higher gas prices per Bloomberg. According to the Washington Post, the Army Corps of Engineers dredges an average 265 million cubic yards in the Mississippi Valley each year, a process that totals 2.5 billion. Although costly, the work to maintain a viable transportation network within the Mississippi River represents what the Corps estimate to be 12.5 billion in transportation cost savings due to the expense of alternative cargo transportation. No rain, no grain. What does this mean for crop cargo? Without the minimum water level to safely traverse through the Mississippi River, crop cargo will remain floating in terminals. According to the New York Times, soon 60% of grain exported from the US is shipped along the Mississippi River through New Orleans and Louisiana, which poses a threat to commerce distribution if transportation continues to remain unmoving. Farmers are in the middle of fall harvest, a peak time for transportation. However, with continued backups in river transit, grain storage is filling up and farmers are being forced to figure out a solution as to where to store their harvested crops while they wait for availability on a barge. While the public and media generally understand that our economy depends upon viable international ocean shipping, trucking and rail transportation, the essential role of our inland waterways is often overlooked, says Peter Friedman, executive director of the Agriculture Transportation Coalition to CNBC. Our members depend upon adequate water levels in the Mississippi River system to reach domestic and international export markets. The low water disruptions on the supply chain will be felt not only by U.S. producers of food, farm and fiber, but also by U.S. and international consumers as well. What does this mean for fertilizer, oil and coal? Fertilizer. Farmers in the U.S. apply fertilizer in November and a slowdown in river traffic could delay the crop's inputs from reaching the corn belt in time, says Alexis Maxwell, an analyst at Bloomberg. Nitrogen fertilizer, which corn farmers apply each year, travels by river up from New Orleans to the Midwest. About a one-third of U.S. consumption of the common nitrogen fertilizers, urea, moves on the Mississippi, says Maxwell. Oil. According to Bloomberg, about 4.5 million barrels of crude and refined products move by tanker and barge between the Midwest and Gulf Coast each month. With the inability to transport oil, the lack of accessibility will drive prices to an even higher number than what we've seen. Coal. 35% of U.S. thermal coal comes from Mississippi, so that will play a significant role in shaping the current economic landscape, per the Washington Post. What does this mean for history? Despite hitting the ladder board with a record all-time low, the decreased water levels exposed a 19th century shipwreck in Baton Rouge. The discovery is certainly a win for Baton Rouge history and the legacy of the ships. However, with the conservation of dry forecasts, river scavengers may continue to discover over long submerged treasures. With water levels so low and the river's flow weakened, salt water from the Gulf of Mexico could start creeping upstream, which could threaten local ecology and drinking supplies. The US Army Corps of Engineers announced plans at the end of September to construct a seal, an underwater obstacle to halt the salt water's flow upstream. The Mississippi River tends to experience seasonally low water levels in the fall, the Corps said, but with drought conditions persisting across the Mississippi's headwater regions in the Midwest, it may be a while before water heights return to normal. The bottom line, unfortunately the lower water levels won't only compromise shipments and travel, but the economy as well, since the Mississippi River is used as a key portal for low cost effective transit of large scale goods, America's ability to thrive hinges on its well-being and proper function. I'm Waterfront Gurus and I hope you guys like this video, please leave us a like and subscribe if you like it, we're gonna keep shipping videos like this, uh, so I'll see you guys soon.